All right, we're going to be looking at some uh, questions from the homework assignment on exercise 6H, the one that uh, involves uh, simultaneous equations. So uh, Amy and Michelle have got $29.40 between them. How much money does each have? So let's, uh, let's start by um, defining our variables. And this time we're going to be defining two different variables. That's going to be our particular problem-solving strategy here. So uh, X can be the uh, a amount of Amy's money, and uh, Y can be uh, Michelle's money. Now, it says uh, that Amy's money is three quarters of Michelle's money. So Amy's money, that's X, is three quarters of Michelle's money, that's Y. Furthermore, it says that uh, they have $29.40 between them. So the sum of their two amounts of money must be 29.40. So uh, looking at this system of equations, it's already set up beautifully to use substitution as an approach because x has been isolated within the first equation of the uh, two different pieces of information. So let's replace the x with a 3 quarters y. And uh, now I know that you guys aren't crazy about fractions, so why don't we multiply through by 4 here to clear the fractions, but I must multiply every term by 4, including the 29.40. And so I've now got a 117.6. So that's a total of 7y on the left. And so let's divide both sides by uh, 7. And, uh, oops, I forgot my 0 down here. And let's just do the division. Divide that amount by 7. And 16.8. Uh, so uh, that means that Michelle, who is Y, has got $16.80. And so it's pretty quick to substitute into the second equation to find out how much money X is, or how much money Amy has. And so uh, X is going to equal the subtraction between them. And uh, if we do this, 29.40. minus 16.80 and we're left with uh, 12.6 and so we can conclude then that uh, Amy, who is X has $12.60 and Michelle has uh, $16.80 Okay. Uh, all right, let's go on to uh, problem number eight. Margarine sold in 250 gram or 400 gram packs. And we need to know how many uh, packs of each type the manager received. So let's define our variables. Uh, let X be the number of 250 gram packs. And uh, let y be the number of 400 gram packs. Now it says that he received a total of 58 packs. So x plus y must be 58. That's the total number of packs. And let's just now discuss their, uh, the weights of each of these sets of packs. Um, so if we have a look at, say, the 250 gram packs, each of these X packs is worth 250 grams. So we need to multiply them together to figure out the total weight of them. And we've got 400 times Y, and that gives us the total weight. Now, if these are in grams, I need to transfer the 19.6 kilograms into grams. And because kilo means thousand, I've got to move the decimal place one, two, oops, that's one too many, three times, giving us 19,600 grams. So make sure that your units do match. And so now uh, I 
I'm going to solve this using polysimilt so that we can practice doing this. So I'll go into my apps and I'll select polysimilt 2 and I want to go into the uh, simultaneous equation solver. And I've got two equations and two unknowns, so I'm ready to go to next. My matrix, if I look at it, it's 1x plus 1y equals 58. And it's 250x plus 400y is equal to 19,600 total grams. Okay, just double check the matrix, looks good. And so I'll now say solve, and I find out that I received 24 and uh, of the 250 gram packs and 34 of the 400 gram packs. So let's write that into a conclusion. Therefore, the manager, and I know that you might think this conclusion is tedious, but remember, if you've been consulted as a mathematical expert, you need to give your answer back in the terms in which it was given to you. So 24 250 gram packs and 34 400 gram packs. Let's go on to uh, question number nine. So, we know that this triangle is equilateral. Find A and B. Well, if it's equilateral, all of its sides are equal. So, uh, I don't have to define any variables in this question because uh, the variables have been provided on the diagram. And they're abstract values. They don't actually represent real-life quantities. They just represent values inside a theoretical uh, diagram. So uh, let's not bother defining variables. We can immediately state that this side, b plus 2, must be equal to uh, this side over here, a plus 4. Uh, we could also say that uh, b plus 2 is equal to 4a minus b. And I suppose you could even go as far as to say that 4a minus b equals a plus 4, but that's kind of going to be redundant, I assume. Why don't we use that as a little check at the end? So let's see later on whether 4a minus b truly is equal to a plus 4. And if it is, we'll know that the values of a and b must be correct, because all three pairs of sides are equal. All right, to solve this system, uh, let's put them both into standard form. So I'll take my first equation, I'll move the a to the left, it becomes a negative a. And I'll move my 2 to the right, it becomes a negative 2, and 4 minus 2 is equal to 2. Same thing in the second equation, let's bring the 4a to the left. And I want all of my b's on the right. If I bring this negative b to the, sorry, to the left, if I bring it to the left, it becomes a positive b, giving me 2b. And then I want all my constants on the right. I've got no constants left on the right right now, but if I bring the positive 2 over, it will become a negative 2. And the reason I've rearranged these equations in the system is so that I can use polysimilt again, because now both equations are in standard form. I've lined up my first variable, I've lined up my second variable, and on the other side of the equal sign, I've lined up my constants. So let's feed them in. I can just press system on calculator to go straight back and overwrite the equation, uh, sorry, the matrix. Negative 1, 1, and 2. And the second one, negative 4, and negative 2. And let's solve. Tells us that x is 3. In our case, uh, a is 3, and b is equal to 5. So uh, let's see whether this is really correct by substituting the values into the other pair of sides. Is it true, then, that 4 times 3 minus 5, which we can see is, uh, is equal to 7, is that equal to... If I just take my a, 3 plus 4, yeah, that equals 7. And so, uh, because both sides are equal to one another, that validates so, uh, that my values of a and b must have been correct. And the last problem is uh, number 10. A rectangle has perimeter 32 centimeters. And we're being asked at the end, find the dimensions of the original rectangle. Well, we know that dimensions are in terms of x and y. So uh, let x be the length, and let y be the width. 
And it's even helpful to draw a little diagram for yourself. Oops, I guess my length x is going to be my longer of the values. So x and x, and these are the widths, y and y. And diagrams are helpful so that we can see geometric relationships. We're told that the rectangle has a perimeter of 32 centimeters. So that's two lengths plus two widths is 32. We're also told that if three centimeters is taken from the length, so we take away three centimeters from the length, then the rect, oh, and then we add it to the width, so we'll add those three centimeters to the width, the rectangle becomes a square. Now in the case of a square, we can see that all of our sides are equal. In other words, x and y would become equal to one another. So here's our new length. I took three centimeters away from it. And if I'm going to add the three centimeters onto my width, my new, my new length and my new width must be equal to one another. So here's my system of equations. In my second equation, let's bring everything over to the uh, left-hand side so I can put it into standard form and use polysomilt. So my y comes to the left and becomes a negative y. My negative 3 moves to the right, and becoming a positive 3 creates a total of 6 on the right. And now I'll go polysomilt. Let's go system so that I can go straight back into my system matrix. 2, 2, 32, and 1, negative 1, 6. Solve. And I can see that x is 11, and y is equal to 5. And so that must mean that the dimensions of the original rectangle are 11 by 5. Therefore, the rectangle's dimensions are 11 centimeters by 5.